back in to Michigan's Morning Show. Tim Nestor, Joanne Paul, Amanda Wall, Tony Cuthbert, and Gary Austin live around the state of Michigan on the Michigan Talk Network, 33 after the hour. Our next guest is a specialist and um, an author and an all-around wonderful woman, or so I'm told. We'll find that out because I've never talked to her, and we get a chance to do that live on the air here. Her name is Dr. Annabella Sharbet, holds a Ph.D. in neuroscience from the University College of London. She's written a book, her first novel, called A Life Lived Ridiculously. It's a novel about a girl with obsessive-compulsive disorder who falls in love with a sociopath, which is an interesting plot premise, and I'm interested to get a read of this. She's on the other end of our line. Dr. Charbert, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm very well. Thank you for having me on the show. It is wonderful to talk to you. Um, You know, so often in the culture of America, uh, mental illness and mental disorders are oftentimes mischaracterized, oftentimes they're mocked in many cases, and in a lot of cases, they're they're very serious disorders, and you're kind of shedding light on that through the book and through a novel. It is a fictional account, but it has some very real-world applications about OCD. You've studied this for years. Why is this such a, a big issue in our society? Um, well, OCD is um, a disorder. It's uh, Until recently, I think a lot of people would have kept it secret because they would be embarrassed by it. Fortunately now, thanks to um, television and celebrities coming out and saying that they have it, it's much more in the open so people can talk about it. But it's still a very isolating condition because it's all happening inside the sufferer's head and it's very hard to describe it and really illustrate just how painful it is. So it's an important condition. It's, um, It's important to raise awareness about it and to really illustrate just how debilitating it can be. And it can be really debilitating. I mean, people can live with this if it's if it's treated. If there there's some steps in place, there are there are some therapies that successfully um, sort of combat this. Are there not? Yes, I mean now uh, a lot of the most common drug that people use to treat OCD is called um, SSRI, um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and um, they've had a lot of success actually with many patients. Um, some people prefer to stay away from drugs, or they don't. Uh, respond well to the drugs, so they'll try cognitive behavioral therapy. That's much harder work. Um, it doesn't work for everybody, um, and it's a much more long-term investment. Obviously, the drugs are long-term as well, because you are really, you have to take them for life. Um, you know, your OCD is a biological disorder of the brain, and it doesn't just um, go away with a few rounds of um, medication. It's a, a commitment for life. So, um, but there is treatment. Dr. Sharbert, what uh, you have some notables who have actually been diagnosed and who have come forward. How has that helped in the process of getting the information out? Well, I think it's uh, wonderful, actually, that the celebrities are speaking about it because um, it is such an isolating and embarrassing condition when you suffer from it yourself. So the fact that so many celebrities are coming out and saying, you know, I, I suffer from this, um, it just it brings it into the public domain. So people who may never have heard from about OCD are now hearing about it, which then makes um, perhaps their friends and relatives who might be suffering from it um, more likely to share it, to be open about it. And with any mental illness, um, there's nothing more therapeutic than being able to be open about it. How can you tell if you are suffering from OCD or if you, you know of people who may be suffering from OCD? Well, um, OCD has some um, specific symptoms such as you have the obsessive thoughts, which are constantly going round and round in your head, they nag you, you can't really concentrate on anything else because these thoughts are just there with you 24-7. Our um, other, other thoughts are frequently accompanied by compulsions. Um, compulsions are normally um, they're designed to, in an attempt to rid yourself of the thought, but evidently it's never actually worked. But, and the compulsions are repetitive behaviors. Uh, whether it's repeatedly washing or cleaning or checking or counting. Um, and again, the, the, this behavior is done to the extent that the person is very, it's, they are, they're pretty much unable to function in everyday life because that's all they're doing. Um, it depends on the degree or the severity. Sometimes they can still get out of the house. But it's still, you know, it's still really disruptive to their lives, these um, obsessions and compulsions. 
Um, so th- that's the sort of main aspect of OCD. OCD is an anxiety disorder, so the obsessive thought is not just a thought, like a song that's trapped in your head, but it's accompanied by an intense anxiety and an, in- an intense fear, which makes it hard to just ignore. So that's why the sufferer is so compelled and so motivated to try to get rid of the thought using compulsions, because they the thought there's this, ang- this fear that makes the thought so gripping. Mm-hmm. I was really surprised to hear that Howard Stern, Jessica Alba, Megan Fox, Cameron Diaz, and Leonardo DiCaprio all suffer as of OCD. And the TV show Monk really sort of brought, I think, it into a, a, a home environment in where you actually saw the functioning of, of someone with OCD who was actually able to you know, have some strengths and weaknesses in dealing with that. Was yeah. That, was, that, uh, was that, again, instrumental in trying to, to explain what this disease is all about? Oh, absolutely, because a TV show like Monk really illustrates it. It, it. it doesn't just tell you what OCD is about, but it shows you. And that's really important, again, for um, the general public to see that, you know, people who suffer from OCD are perfectly intelligent, capable human beings. Um, and But they have this this problem that's, that's actually causing them a lot of distress in their lives. So, And it's, it's taking away from their quality of life. Sure. Dr. Annabella Charbett, um, also your book is coming out, A Life Lived Ridiculously. Tell us a little bit about the novel, about the girl with OCD who falls in love with a sociopath. I'm intrigued by this. <laughs> so uh, the girl, her name's Maxine, and um, she's trying to uh, conceal the fact that she had OCD uh, at the beginning of the story. She's not even sure what she's suffering from. Um, I, I designed it so that she was actually suffering from slightly... Um, unusual symptoms, so she didn't have cleaning uh, OCD or or, um, or or the more typical symptoms. She wasn't a hoarder. In fact, she was quite the opposite. She was terrified of personal possessions. Um, it's a condition called obsessive compulsive Spartanism, which is less known. And the reason is to really illustrate the isolation and how, if something is unknown and doesn't have a name, how much you, you can suffer how excessively just by the fact that it's unknown. And nobody speaks about it. So she's trying to pretend to be normal, and her family is very judgmental, and and they're actually um, they're constantly nitpicking at her and bullying her, and asking her, you know, why are you still single? What's wrong with you? And um, and so she's she's just trying to get on with life, and but you know, she's because she's suffering, she's she's going through a very vulnerable moment, and so in walks the sociopath, and as we know, sociopaths prey on vulnerable individuals, so she's a perfect target for him. And he completely um, distracts her, actually. And for a while, she even thinks that, he's, that she's cured from her OCD. What she doesn't realize is that she's just transferred her focus onto this guy who's driving her insane. But I don't want to give too much away of the plot. <laughs> right. Where can you, uh, the book's available, I'm assuming, Amazon.com? Uh, yes, you can get it Amazon, Barnes & Noble's, either online or in their stores. Um and Amazon, and anywhere else, actually, any other websites, Books Million, anywhere where books are sold, you can find A Life Lived Ridiculously. All right, A Life Lived Ridiculously by Dr. Annabella Charbon. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure spending time with you this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. All right, back in just a moment, 41 after the hour on Michigan's Morning Show, State Ride Across the State of Michigan on the Michigan Talk Network. Mm-hmm.